welcome to the <laughs> best and worst of April edition of Why So Serious 2013. Brogan Hayes from Movies.ie. Rory Cushion from Entertainment.ie right here. Mady. From the Fingal Film Festival right here. <laughs> Brian from Spain and everything. and everything. That's he had fingers and all the pies. Yeah, whore. Know, yeah. whore. Dirty, dirty. When, anytime you have a pie, his fingers, fingers in there. <laughs> so we're here to talk about the three best and three worst films of April. Uh, 2013. Yes. So we're going to start with our third favourite, which yes. is one I haven't seen. So I'm going to let the beautiful, effervescent, <laughs> bubbly champagne woman Brogan take over for this one while I sit back and just talk for two minutes. Go. Okay, it's uh, The Light Quartet. A Light Quartet, uh, starring Christopher Walken, Catherine Keener, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and some guy whose name I always forget. What a cast. <laughs> and Image and Poots, and it's basically about a string quartet um, coming to terms with the fact that Christopher Walken, who's one of their founder members, finds that he can no longer play and the impact this has on the group and it sounds really incredibly boring but it's about relationships and it's about how they all relate together and it's actually fantastic the cast is wonderful the performances are amazing as you would probably expect and it, yeah i was really pleasantly surprised it's one of those little quiet films that is actually fantastic not to be confused with quartet no or one of the 17 million films lately that seem to come out about old people and yeah. how fun and do you remember that ad in The Simpsons where uh, all, all people were drinking bubbly lemonade and you're like, yeah, we're still young? Yeah, yeah. All the films are like yeah, that now. Yeah, It's not too much like that, though, because there's only one old dude in it, Christopher Walken. He's not even that old. Mm. Yeah. Out of ten? Um, out of ten, I'd give it seven. Third worst, mm, sad face, is <laughs> uh, actually not that bad. Because this has not been a great month for bad films as opposed to the last <laughs> month, which is a bad month for great films. <laughs> this is The Odd Life of Timothy Green. And it's really only in our worst films because it's just so weird and sort of inoffensive in a way and sort of very offensive in another way. Yeah, it's very like, it's too, it's too like tooth rottingly sweet. Yeah. Very saccharine -y. Yeah, basically yeah. Uh, Jennifer Garner and Joel Edgerton uh. are parents who can't have children so they write down all their wishes of what they think their child would be like, put them in a box, bury them in the garden and it magically rains over their house in this drought-stricken town. And next thing they know, there's a little mud-covered child in their house who's calling them mum and dad, and that's Timothy Green. But he has leaves on his legs, on his ankles, and when his leaves are gone, he has to go too. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a reverse zombie film. <laughs> when you think about it. Yeah. It's, instead of like the dead coming back to life, it's like the unborn coming to life. Yeah. And then going back Into to a tree. I suppose I guess. so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, kids would like it a lot, I think. It's one of those weird films that we used to watch when we were younger and we're like, we loved it. And then when we grown up, we look back and we'd be like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I think kids would love it, but anyone accompanying kids. Maybe a little bit bored. I yeah. may get a bit of a toothache yeah. from this week. Like type two, type 2 diabetes. Yeah, way definitely. Out of 10, I'd give it 5. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Not that bad. No. But. Not that great either. We don't have a lot to give you in the bad stakes until later on. Our two favourite films for the month of April are two different films, but they're both really good, but we couldn't decide on which one d decided to be first and second. Yeah. So I'm going to go first uh, out of anti-feminism. <laughs> and Fine. my favourite movie for the month of April was Oblivion. This world out here. The Earth has been ruined by an alien attack uh, after the moon was destroyed and caused tidal waves, uh, and then the aliens came down and wiped out most of the rest of humanity. The uh, humanity's won the war, uh, but Earth is completely uninhabitable, so everyone is now living on a moon on off the uh, Saturn? Titan? Titan. Off the, Titan is the moon, yeah. Off the, off the surface of Saturn. Very difficult <laughs> to say. <laughs> um, the only two people left on Earth are Tom Cruise and Andrea Riseborough, and they're just looking Which after this. Which is not bad if you're just going for repopulating the Earth, like... Pretty good. We're not going to go down the Adam and Eve route because <laughs> there's, a, there's an attention problem with that. I know, We're I know. We're not going to go down that route. Uh, they're looking after robots who are gathering the last of Earth's uh, minerals and supplies and stuff to power everyone off base, off planet, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but Tom Cruise comes across information that makes him question everything he's been told up until then. Yep. Very long synopsis, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, very little time to tell you how great it is. It looks fantastic. It looks like it, the whole thing was designed by Apple. Yeah, very shiny and sleek. Uh, the droids in it were amazing. Some of the best sci-fi creations I've seen lately. They're like uh, Hal meets 
something very violent. <laughs> but they also, it. like, the noises that they make, you can almost tell what they're thinking and what they're saying, and they actually become quite funny. Um, Tom Cruise plays the typical Tom Cruise character, but, you know, he's good at this, so no complaints there, this is what he does. There is one scene that is a little bit too Tom Cruise-y for my liking, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let is it go. Is he running it? No. Oh. No. He doesn't do the... Basically, it's it's, run. it's a best of sci-fi <laughs> compilation, but it looks and sounds great. Emily oh, three did the soundtrack. The soundtrack is amazing. Not one hundred percent original. Story's a little bit meh in places, but uh, it's very slow. It's a slow burn as well. Like, don't go in expecting wall-to-wall -wall action because you're not going to get it. Yeah, but it's more sci-fi than sci-fi action. Yeah, but it is. I really, really enjoyed it. It's, I preferred it to the other one, and I'm going to give it eight out of ten. Ooh, so there. Ooh, I uh, agree with eight out of ten actually. Would you? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our second worst movie for April was... All Things to All Men. I can't, do, I can't even remember what this is about now. It was about crime lords in London, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But Gabriel Byrne was wearing his coat on his shoulders and the other guy was annoyed about something. And it's yeah. Just, There's it, people in it who you recognise, like... Um, see? That guy who was in a band film, who's a baddie in one of the bands. Oh yeah, that guy. You know their yeah, faces yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot, but yeah. uh, but this film just seems like it was massacred in editing. That yeah. there's so many plot holes and so many questions that you're just going, wait, hold on a minute, how did that guy meet that guy and end up there? Like the whole the whole time I was watching, it, I felt like it was a two part. I said this before, a two part crime thing. So maybe on BBC Two. And I haven't seen part one. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just watching true. part two and I'm like, I don't understand why most of these things are happening. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, you know, catch up. And it doesn't, there's no room to catch up. No. It's completely confusing. Yeah. And it was kind of poorly directed and the acting isn't great and it's very, see, it's already super forgettable. I forget what it's about. Yeah, I, yeah. Three out of ten? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Pretty bad. Who Sorry, Gabriel Byrne. I, I really want to like your films because you're a fellow Irishman, but it was shit. Make better choices. Yeah. <laughs> be better. <laughs> At choosing things. And be in better. Yeah. And... Your number one. My number one film for... Would be my April number two, but I'm fine with this, see? For Give April and take. 2013 was Iron Man 3. What? <laughs> three. <laughs> in the fallout of the Avengers battle of New York, uh, Tony Stark finds that he can't sleep and he's a little bit more vulnerable than he was before. And along comes the Mandarin, this... I suppose uh, he's supposed to be Chinese, but it's never really said. This Asian terrorist who's, dis who's bent on destroying um, Iron Man and at the same time... Um, at the same time, Aldrich Killian comes back, who had asked uh, Tony Stark for help about 10 or 13 years ago, and he puts his relationship with Pepper Potts into jeopardy, and it's all just jeopardy, jeopardy, jeopardy. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. Jeopardy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell the, the bad points. Okay. The plot was very reminiscent of a few other recent uh, blockbusters, but I can't go into which ones because it might spoil it. Mm. Um, Rebecca Hall's character was completely underwritten. Oh, yeah. The middle third was mostly action free. There was a lot of small firefights, but there wasn't a lot of big firefights. Uh, and it being a Shane Black film, having seen and loved Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, I was expecting it to be a lot... Snappier? Yeah, a lot more one-liners. Uh, there was more one-liners, I think, in the first one, even the second one. But the third one is a better film. Yeah. Overall, that was me just being really down to buzz right there. I don't want you to go in thinking, this is the greatest film since the Avengers. It's Even not. It might be the best Marvel film. It's the only Marvel film since the Avengers. Yeah, it's the best so that's correct. Marvel film since the Avengers, but it's it's not as good as Avengers Assemble. No, but it is the best Iron Man film. Yes. Yeah. Um, the good things about it are Robert Downey Jr.'s on fine form. He's obviously having the time of his life making this film. Um, liked Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. I actually liked her in this yeah, one. Yeah, didn't hate her in this one. Rock and the abs. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Carved out of wood, that woman. Uh, ben Kingsley's character... Is amazing. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, the plot twist um, I, that appears in the film, I'm not saying anything, um, is absolutely incredible. And you just actually don't see it coming at no. all. Um, Shane Black's trademark humour is in there. It is quite funny. And the one-liners, when they do appear, are very funny. And in years to come, it's going to end up on people's favourite Christmas movie list. Yeah, it is. Because it's out of Christmas. Because Shane Black has a thing about Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Out of ten? Nine. Out of ten? I'd give it eight again. See, that's probably why it's number one, because you gave it a nine. Yeah. yeah. Already real. Uh, our worst one, which I don't think you've seen. 
No, I haven't. Have you seen it? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. Have you seen it? Scary Movie 5? Yeah. No. Scary Movie 5. I'm not going to go into the plot. I'm going to save a one? lot of time. Is there one? I'm going to save a lot of time. <laughs> right, I'm not going to go into the plot. I'm not going to tell you who's in it. I'm not going to do any of that. For the next 20 seconds, I'm going to be <clears throat> as funny, if not funnier, than the whole 99 minutes of Scary Movie 5. Okay. You ready? Go. One out of ten, just for existing. Uh, and that's our best and worst of April. 2013. Very quickly, we're going to go on to what we're looking forward to in May. Star Trek Into Darkness, I think, is the first release. What? Very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Brian? Yes, very exciting. Yes, good. M Maisie? Yes. Trek fan? Yes. <laughs> <It's> called evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, evil. Benedict Cumberbatch is playing a villain, which makes a change, because he's normally on the side of the angels. Sherlock fans. <laughs> um, Great Gatsby, fantastic clothes, fantastic soundtrack. Oh, soundtrack's amazing. Me. Leonardo DiCaprio is amazing in everything he's ever done. I do want to hurt Carrie Mulligan. Mulligan a little bit. Yeah, she doesn't stop crying. Or give him whingy face. My, my whole life. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it could be fantastic. I didn't really like Australia. No. But I liked the Red Curtain trilogy. Was amazing. Stuff. So, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah. And the Hangover Three. Could go either way. Yeah. Could go either way. First one was a lot of fun. Second one... I didn't see it, actually. The second one? No. Oh. First one was amazing. I thought it was A lot really of fun. Hopefully, they'll just go all out. The trailers haven't been funny so far. Except that bit with the giraffe. I didn't think that was funny. I thought it was amusing. The only bit I liked was where he was on the thing. On the... Uh, what is this? Parachute. Oh, yeah. And he's like, I love cocaine! It's <laughs> the only line I've liked if the, of the two trailers I've seen so far. Yeah. But, again... We'll give it the benefit of the doubt. It could be one of those films that when you go see a drunk... It'll be like the most amazing film ever. Look, nobody saw The Hangover 1 coming. Nobody, nobody expected it to be as good as it was. So, no. And I suppose Hangover 2 has dropped our expectations for where 3 could potentially end up. Yep. It could be an Iron Man thing all over again. It could be. Could be. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're looking forward to in May. Until then, that's been Mary on camera. Hello. A. <laughs> Brian on camera B for Brian. Woo. Yeah. This has been Silverman. It's been over to the spectrum, but it's got a life of its own. Stop! Right. Broden. Rody. Oh, and so you. serious. And, and Cineworld. Mom. Cineworld, thank you very much for allowing us to film in your lovely screen. That's just dirty. That's just, that's just wrong. <laughs> like Stop that? feeling up the screen. Yeah. You're going to get us thrown out. Oh. Yeah, so until then, until then. Until then. Rory, Brogan, guys. Woo! Yay! 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 Shiny lights.